Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we are coming to you from the AHA Avondale Boutique here in Durban. And yes, we can all feel winter cream being creeping in all around the country and we're having to pack away those summer closets and bring out the boots and the coats. And yet we want to feel fashionable and warm and we want to look good and feel good. And today we are joined by a budding entrepreneur who is a deeply rooted Durban lass, which shows in her unique design and her accessories. We are joined by Tarusha Chetty from Durban and we'd love to welcome you to the show. And it's such a pleasure having an individual that's as talented as yourself on Modern and Modest. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so Tarusha, before we get into the detail of fashion and design and your creative mind, um, let's, let's just talk about Tarusha Chetty. Who are you and I believe you're currently studying. Share with our viewers just a little about yourself and what you're studying. Uh, I'm basically a 25 year old who's studying somatology at DUT. Um, I have a love for creative arts, dancing, and for nature and just being me. Okay, so mythology, why have you chosen this career path? I love working with people mm -hmm. and helping them in a holistic, natural way. And I found that somatology is able to help me um, bring that about in people. So that's the reason for studying somatology. Okay, I'm very excited to know more about the creative mindset behind Tarusha Chetty. So I believe you are a fashion and accessory designer. Tell us more about what you design and more about what actually got you into designing the pieces you do. Um, I used to love doodling on anything and everything that I could lay my hands on. And during my part-time holidays, I used to put henna for brides and their families. And from there, I found a pair of sneakers that, I ha that hadn't been used in a long time. And I decided why not spruce them up a bit. And that's how the henna art sneakers actually came about. And from there, we've uh, put our henna art on different accessories and we've been trying them out and there seems to be a great love for them. You mentioned accessories. Can you show us or tell us more about the type of accessories that you design? So we design on jewelry boxes, yeah. we do mirrors for wedding trays, um, we're also slowly getting into uh, the clothing industry where we'll be designing on t-shirts and from there we have more ideas in mind but that's later to come. Okay. So when I walked in I was just wowed at how you've taken a simple tummy tacky and turned it into something this creative and I'm just intrigued at how you put your design together the colors tell us more about your designs I mean how how do you come up with an idea how long does it take you to to do what you do so the henna art sneakers actually are innovative and we want people to go out into the world and feel um, positive and leave their positive foot footprint on um, you know on what they're doing and what makes them feel good and that's what our henna art sneakers actually promote mm -hmm. and from there we decided you know let's um, let's make them more innovative by adding bright colors by um, getting people involved in it so we make it custom based on what you like your preferences and um, what maybe what pattern you have in mind mm -hmm. and then we expand on that to create them. Well, I must say it is definitely a very, very unique idea to come up with henna design sneakers. So when did you design your first sneaker or, or what got into your mind to say, you know what, I've been doodling on paper, on hands, on whatever <laughs> it is, and I want to do it on a sneaker. Tell us about that story. When did this happen for you and what got you to think about designing a sneaker? So we actually started one year ago and within this one year period we've seen um, our henna art sneakers explode and what got me started was just having an old pair lying around looking sad and I thought you know let's just see what we can do with it if I can doodle all over the place maybe I can on sneakers and that's how uh, we got it started it's just by 
being creative by putting your mind to something by seeing where your creativity lies and just rolling with it so what do you use to uh, decorate these sneakers we use a fabric paint in which we uh, design the sneakers so that uh, we have a long lasting wear on them and you know you can use it for as long as you need to and it's very long lasting and are they waterproof they are waterproof so you wouldn't have a problem going and playing in the rain <laughs> okay so coming back to the name the brand Desi Designs well I know Hena and Desi go well together but who's come up with the name and why Desi Designs so I came up with the mm -hmm. name and Desi just refers to everything um, creative to embracing our culture to um, leaving our positive mark it's something that I really you know find inspirational to me mm -hmm. you know by we see a lot of youngsters that are losing their culture that are going more into the modern world and forgetting you know their roots yes. so why not bring it back in a fashionable trendy way and that's what we uh, aspire to do with the SE okay. designs so doodling and being creative and something you've loved doing just your creative side and you've decided to one day take a boring little <laughs> sneaker and spruce it up a bit and you've taken this passion of yours or this creativity into a business. So how long has your business been running for and do you work independently? I do work independently, but of course with the help of my family, we have um, done this for about a year and a half mm -hmm. and uh, we're enjoying every moment of it. We, we've seen it grow at an exponential rate and uh, we loving the journey really okay so coming back to these amazing sneakers and you work independently so how long does it take Tarusha to design a pair of sneakers we have gotten it down to a fine art <laughs> <laughs> we started it at a very slow rate but uh, with practice comes perfect so we do take a um, a maximum of two weeks in which we get everything done sorted and uh, shipped off mm -hmm. but if I had to break it down it would be about give or take three days so that everything is perfect From start to end. Yeah. now I look you know we can see that you have uh, different colors do you buy these sneakers in those colors or do you do your sneakers come in a in a flat white sneaker and do you create the color uh, we do create the color so when we get the sneaker it's plain white and from there we take it and we do we custom design them based on your preference your color scheme your outfit choice and from there we make it according to what you like so it's especially made just for you Okay, so would you say this is more like a East meets West kind of thing where you could still feel modern and trendy in sneakers and yet have that identity of your Indian culture that's coming out in your yes. sort of design? Uh, yes, that's what we do aspire to do and it's more, we also take African patterns um, with our certain mm -hmm. uh, henna art so it's, uh, it's more of an uh, Indo-Western. Okay. Yeah and bringing Here. out I think your culture you know whichever culture you want to actually bring out be it Indian exactly. or African okay so it's especially made for our South Africans it is a proudly South African product and I think that's what we mainly need to do is promote our South African heritage definitely okay so apart from uh, fashion and accessories what tell us more about Desi Designs what does Desi Designs have to offer uh, do you make up customized uh, pieces is it does it just have to be an accessory where do you plan on taking the AC designs we do plan on expanding and uh, working with different artists and designers to create a cultural feast mm -hmm. and uh, Desi Designs has a lot of uh, has a lot to offer in terms of inspiring young budding entrepreneurs showing them that you know 
anyone that has the right mindset can go forward and be who they want to be. They don't have to stick to, uh, you know, to this confinement that mm. sometimes we put ourselves into. And by, you know, getting out there and being who you want to be is not as difficult as it may seem. Yes. You have long nights. It's it's tiring at times. But if you have that right support structure, you've got uh, a good head on your shoulders. By being you and not compromising who you are, you can make so much more of yourself. And that's what we want to inspire young people to do. Okay, we'll take a quick ad break, and when back, we'll be chatting more to Tarusha Chetty all about Desi Designs and how you too could be a budding entrepreneur. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Modern and Modest and today we have with us Tarusha Chetty from Desi Designs. Now Tarusha, just before the ad break we were chatting about what Desi Designs has to offer and you've got quite a mm -hmm. lot on your plate from accessories to sneakers and taking you through to garments. Now, Tarusha, we chatted about the, the artwork and you, you know, you come up with your artwork because you keep in mind that people need to identify with their culture. And we spoke about uh, your African design. So tell us about African designs. I know henna comes naturally to us, I would think, because we've grown up as little girls and having these henna designs. But how do you come up with the African designs to bring out African culture? So African designs are patterns that are put together same as henna. Mm -hmm. So why can't we mix both of them up and create a cultural feast? And that's what I have taken to do. Um, so what we do is that um, depending on a garment you wish to wear, we will design it on that. And we take maybe a pattern on your outfit and we will imprint it onto the shoe. Uh, so that's what we mainly do when it comes to African art. So you mentioned um, depending on what you want to wear, so does this mean that you make your pieces uh, as per request? Are they customized for individuals? It is customized based on what you would like. Um, so you can either tell me if you have a specific color in mind or pattern, mm -hmm. or if you leave me to design my own thing, then you will get a surprise. And surprisingly, <laughs> uh, you'll be quite happy with the outcome. So, yeah. Just, I, I don't know if you've thought about this or you have it in place already. Do you have titles for every design that you do? I mean, can you identify by a title where this is maybe a certain design and that is a certain design? Uh, we mainly uh, use uh, pictures okay. to identify with them. So if you like a certain design, then clients do send through a picture of what they would like. So um, maybe a color scheme, they would tell me. And then the pattern, if they've seen it on a previously done shoe, then they'll send me through you know, that shoe and say, can we have this color and this pattern? So it's more like a mix and match type of situation. Okay. My next question to you, I mean, the designs seem definitely are very Eastern and you want to bring that culture out. Do you ever get Indian brides coming to you for perhaps wanting to wear a sneaker for a, a henna evening or a mainly evening? We do get a lot of brides who uh, love our sneakers. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, them for their henna or mainly evening, their hardi or nyelungu and for their wedding day. Uh, so a lot of Did you just say wedding day? Yes, wedding day. So do you day. get brides wearing sneakers on the wedding <laughs> Yes. Days? Okay. It's become a very fashionable trend these days oh, uh, that brides wear sneakers for their wedding. I mean, why not? It's comfortable mm -hmm. and, you know, you'll never be cranky in a... Uh, in a comfortable yeah. shoe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in, these, in the 18 months that you've taken this creativity and passion and turned it into a business, have you met any challenges yet? Um, every day is a challenge. I mean, you've got so much to see to as um, an individual. You must remember that you've got the planning, the prepping, long nights to see to, um, making sure all orders are in place, that you're getting your orders out in time. I mean, these are like the challenges you'll mm. face as an 
entrepreneur but I, it's one of the best things to go through because you find that you're challenging yourself in ways you never thought were mm. possible and you're growing yourself in that way and to see yourself grow and to see yourself taking something from just an idea that you may have had you know seeing seeing yourself grow that into something that um you never thought possible is more than rewarding and okay. i think that's what everyone should you know aspire to do is be proud of themselves in the little steps they take to their journey to the top okay so with studying cybertology and having these long tired late nights making up these pieces how do you manage putting the two together how do you balance your time um it's a lot of help from my family <laughs> uh, especially my mom who stood by me and she continues to help me in my long nights and my brother who sit up with me and um my gran who actually uh you know they make sure that you're comfortable that you're fed definitely mm. fed and it's an indian thing yeah. <laughs> Okay. And uh you know they keep you keep you sane at times mm. when you feel like you just can't you know do it anymore or you feeling tired they're the inspiration behind me that helps me get to you know places that I thought I was never able to they are my belief system they are my support system okay so we've just recently discovered that you were one out of 40 individuals that have been selected to exhibit at the in Dubai 2019. So what was this like for you when you I mean what did you have to do to be selected? Do they contact you? How did they how did they know about Daisy Designs and how did how did you feel at the time? So it was a selection process in which you had to apply for mm -hmm. and I had come across them um by Google uh and I thought okay let's just see maybe they'll take a liking to my shoes. and uh we sent through the application and we waited a few months because there was a selection process in which had to get done and they contacted me telling the, uh, telling me that the application was successful and i had been selected as um the emerging creative class for 2019 mm -hmm. and it was an amazing experience so in february we were um sent to cape town uh where the exhibition was taking place and it was a 3 day event okay. and uh we met a lot of uh, international and local people uh we were exposed to so much um creative minds and business minds and it actually taught us a lot about business about how to turn your creativity into a business mm -hmm. and um being able to mix with so many different minds and different mindsets it was amazing to see their their passion um you know everyone has a different passion and to see all this come together it was a real treat <laughs> well that was definitely amazing for you i mean just being in business for 18 months with this creative passion and mind that you've turned into business and wow well done to you to be selected <laughs> in mean, 40 you. isn't a large number <laughs> So I'm um, just coming back to being a a thriving entrepreneur. What message can you share with other young individuals that are perhaps just sitting at home and maybe they themselves don't realize how creative they are or maybe some of us are just apprehensive or afraid to take that step. What can you share with them? It's all about believing in yourself, about believing in your capabilities. Yes, it's about positive thinking. but it's all about the hustle you've got to be prepared to work you've got to be prepared to push yourself um and make sure that you know you're doing the best that you can do mm -hmm. don't worry about the next person don't worry about what this person is saying you know don't worry about what the outside world is telling you you believe in yourself you believe in your capabilities and you go out there and you do what you love i mean if you're doing something that you love if you love your product if you love whatever it is that you want to do it will sh it will come across in your work it will come across to other people and they going to love it as well so it's all about that you've got to believe in yourself you got to be prepared for the long nights and you've got to have that amazing support system and you know support support yourself first make sure that you're doing everything to make you happy 
Okay. So if people want to get in touch with you and order a pair of sneakers or one of your little accessory <laughs> boxes, how do they get in touch with you? Do you uh, promote your products um, online or how would one get in touch with you? Okay, so we are an online uh, company where we um, go by the name of the SE Designs by Tarusha. Mm -hmm. We are on Facebook. And Instagram. Our Instagram handle is Desi Designs underscore Tarusha, or Facebook is just Desi Designs by Tarusha, and you can contact me via those two channels. Well, thank you, Tarusha, for joining us on Modern and Modest with your creative mindset and sharing those words of um, wisdom to other thriving entrepreneurs or those that are just looking out to start out. Well, we'd love to wish you everything of the best and I can definitely de see more uh, of Desi Designs coming out here in Durban. Well, that was Tarusha Chetty from Desi Designs. We'll be taking a quick ad break and when back we'll be joined by a psychologist, Hamida Bassa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Modern and Modest. And as you know, here on our show, we always stress and highlight about your mental health, your well-being, and April being the month of Stress Awareness Month since 1992, we thought it would be ideal to discuss stress on our show today. And as we all know and understand that all of us go through those stressful moments, be it a housewife or the career-driven individual or even our little ones tend to experience anxiety and stress at some point um, in life or at some point in time. And we all do need some type of method to deal with it. And today we are joined by psychologist Hamida Bassa who would be able to help us with how to deal with stress or get us to understand better what is stress and how anxiety could lead to stress. Assalamu alaikum Hamida and welcome to Modern and Modest. Um, before we get into April being Stress Awareness Month, our viewers would love to know more about Hamida Basa. Please tell us about yourself and what prompted you into getting into psychology. Jazakallah so much Nosina for inviting me to be on the show. Um, so my name is Hamida Basa Suleiman. My maiden name is Basa and my married name is Suleiman. Um, I've been married for about 10 years and I have three kids, all under the age of five. Okay. <laughs> so it's quite a handful. And I um, also have a private practice in clinical psychology that's based in Musgrave Park on Musgrave Road. I've always wanted to know how people function and what makes them do the things that they do. And having a natural curiosity and wanting to find out how people work and what makes them work and why they have certain passions as opposed to others why do some people overcome obstacles better than others and so, some people fare better in certain circumstances whereas others don't. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to really find answers for that and really find out how people manage those kinds of circumstances and come out successful and so that's why I took psychology and once I started I couldn't stop I just went all the way through. It's a seven year degree mm -hmm. from start to finish and I just kept going and going and going until I finished because once I completed my studies, then it was actually practicing and seeing patients and helping them to get through whatever it is they needed to get through. So it, alhamdulillah, it rooted from just curiosity. Just, <laughs> just curiosity. And I tell okay. as many people as I can, if you can create a curiosity in children mm -hmm. or in the kids that you have, then you can make them do anything. Because children are naturally very curious and they want to know about things, which is why they ask so many questions. Mm -hmm. And in getting, asking those questions, if parents can guide their kids, then they, they can answer questions that we wouldn't have even dreamed of being able to do. Okay. So Alhamdulillah, a mum of three little ones under the age of five, and I know that your little one is just three months old. So mm. how do you cope with having a little three-month-old and still pursuing your career? Alhamdulillah, I have a lot of help. Uh, my husband is very supportive of my career and he's very he also helps around the house quite a lot so i'm very grateful for that my kids have been very strong in that they've all been going to school from a very young age <laughs> because um, that's the only way that we were able to manage it at home and shukar alhamdulillah with a lot of support a lot of patience a lot of duas there are good days and there are bad days and there are some not so okay days <laughs> but shukar we keep going and we keep uh, we keep trying to do our best Okay, so Hamida, you're based in Musgrave Park, uh, not too far off from you. And how long have you been practicing uh, psychology for? So I've been in private practice for about five years. 
And uh, before that, I was in uh, working for state hospitals. So I've worked in and around the Durban area in uh, state hospitals like RK Khan, King Dini Zulu Hospital, which is previously King George Hospital, mm -hmm. Addington Hospital, and uh, Prince Mshieni Hospital in Amlazi. So I've done uh, quite a lot of hospitals in the state sector and then moved to private in 2013. Okay, Alhamdulillah. So Hamida, as we know, um, April calls for the month of uh, highlighting stress awareness mm. and we all go through stress. And we needed an expert like yourself that could, could perhaps, before we go with how to deal with stress, maybe get us to understand what is stress. Okay, so we, everybody experiences some sort of stress. We usually define stress as when we have a lot of demands that we do not have the resources to meet. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have um, certain deadlines or certain things that you need to do, if you feel you don't have the resources or the capacity or the ability to do those things, meet those deadlines, do those tasks, then we experience a certain amount of stress. So stress, there's also healthy stress, which we call you stress. And then there's bad stress, which everybody experiences, mm -hmm. say, I'm so stressed out, I can't manage this, I can't do that. So healthy stress is the good stress, that anxiety you get before you have to do a speech that makes you go and prepare for it. Or that anxiety you have before an exam or before a project that you have to do and you say, oh, I have like two days left, I have to get going, like I can't stop. You know, so those kinds of anxiety we would say is you stress because it's productive. It makes you able to follow through on what you have to do. Where bad stress is when the stress becomes so intense and so deliberating is that it prevents you from doing what you need to do. So when that happens, you say, you shut down, you mm -hmm. say, I can't do this anymore, it's too much, I'm, I, you sleep in bed all day, you feel exhausted, you, can't, you don't have energy to follow through on what you have to do. And that bad stress is what creates a lot of physical problems as well and also mental health problems. So would you say that uh, anyone could experience bad stress? Is this mainly for adults or do you find that our kids experience bad stress as well? I think stress happens anywhere and everywhere. Uh, whether you are a working mother or you are a stay-at-home mother, both people experience stress. Men have stress, women have stress, grandparents have stress, little kids have stress. With a lot of the scholastic demands on young children nowadays, with the excessive amounts of homework and projects that they have to do, a lot of children now also present with anxiety and stress-related kind of issues because they feel like they can't cope and they're not doing as well as they should be doing mm -hmm. or as well as they need to be doing. So anyone and everybody is able to get stress. And with our fast-paced living that we live in at the mm -hmm. moment, with no downtime or relaxing time, anybody can have stress. You mentioned now that you get um, the good stress and then you get the bad stress. And the bad stress is more when you haven't been able to meet your deadlines mm -hmm. and that brings on stress. So would you say that the bad stress is mainly caused by maybe as individuals we're not very organized individuals. Do you think if we could better organize ourselves we would have to deal less with the bad stress? I think organization <laughs> definitely helps and planning also helps as well. But sometimes even the best of plans can be laid to rest, you know, mm -hmm. because what happens is you plan one way and I find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have another plan for you for that day. Um, but I think it's having a plan in place and then not putting pressure on yourself to fulfill that plan mm -hmm. also. Because I have a lot of patients who will say, I was supposed to do this by this date and by this time, and I haven't, and I'm really stressed out about that. And so making a plan, which is supposed to be to help you organize and feel at ease because you have it to be done by a certain way. But some people, what would happen is they would put too much of stress on themselves and berate themselves because they were not able to fulfill those plans that they put in place. And so anxiety kicks in for that as well, mm. because they think, if I haven't done this by this, then I can't do this tomorrow, because tomorrow sure. I was supposed to do that, and I need to do this today. So I think what I need to say is it has to be individually based. How do you function well? You need to know yourself, and you need to understand yourself before mm. you can ask those questions. What may works for me? Because okay. what might work for me might not work for you. Okay. And I need to know what works best for me, and I need to do that. And I need to educate the people around me on how that works best for me. So Hamida, in all your years of practice, can you share with us what are the common uh, types of stress that you deal with? So there's, um, I think with people in general, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of 
home stress like uh, when i say home stress i would categorize it into running the house stress a maintenance of things that you have to do in and around the home there's also financial stress that people experience in the home having to manage and meet all of their financial uh, commitments that they have then there's school stress a lot of kids have stress at school and school stress can be broken down into peer pressure that you have at school academic qualifications that you need to meet and meeting uh, objectives set out by teachers and by parents for children to achieve and then there's obviously work stress mm -hmm. um, I find like in our current economic climate a lot of people are getting retention and losing their jobs and there's a lot of pressure on doing better than expected or pushing through in order to keep their jobs so that they are able to meet their financial commitments so there's also work stress Within work stress also, there's wanting to please your boss, there's also colleagues, uh, colleagues that you don't get along with or you do get along mm -hmm. with, there's sexual harassment in the workplace as well, and there's a lot of issues about self-esteem and whether or not you're good enough, to, especially in corporate fields, I find, where people are not able to f meet their full potential because they feel so overwhelmed by the anxiety of having to be able to keep their jobs. Okay, and can you tell us um, from your... I mean, coming from the background that you come from and you're dealing with stress on a day-to-day -day basis, how important is it for individuals to have a healthy mindset? I think a healthy mindset is definitely extremely important. Um, and I think a healthy mindset means that you have to be able to know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And where you're strong, be strong and do it well. And where you're weak, ask for help. You know. So I always tell a lot of my patients that they should be able to check in with themselves. You know, check in with yourself. If you're feeling low, mm -hmm. or if you're feeling tired, or if you're feeling overwhelmed, or if you feel like you just need a day for yourself, or you need to talk to your mom, or your friends, or your colleague about something, or your husband, or your wife, about what's stressing you out, it's very important to self-regulate. And I think a healthy mindset also means healthy optimism. So if you know for yourself, okay, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm not going to, this is going to stress me out, mm -hmm. this is what I need to do in order to overcome that stress, and then you're able to follow through on those things. We all have bad days, and we all are not perfect at everything, and we certainly can't be perfect all the time. Sure. So in those, when you know you're not your best, or you're not coping well, it's important to check in with yourself, tell yourself, okay, this is what, I'm not feeling good about this, I need to talk to somebody. And if talking to somebody doesn't help, then maybe feeling like, okay, I need to go and see a therapist or I need to see a psychologist to find out what's going on, to find out what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, if mm -hmm. you don't know. Because if you don't check in, what I find happens is that we see patients who come at the end, if they're not educated on mental health and checking in, they come when they're completely depleted and completely stressed out and they're on the edge of burnout. And burnout is when when you reach burnout, it's very hard to lift yourself out of that without medication. So if you check in and you take in the necessary steps to, to maintain a healthy lifestyle and a healthy mind, mm -hmm. then you won't be able to go, you won't like fall down. You know, you'll be able to pick yourself up. From your experience, how many people do check in on a day-to-day -day basis? Or do you need to do this daily? Do you need to do this weekly? I think you have to know what feels good and what doesn't feel good. Okay. So I have... I've had patients for a while now, so in the beginning when I see a patient for the first time that hasn't seen, uh, they haven't had any kind of prior psychotherapy or exposure to a psychiatrist or anything, you have to teach them how to check in. And I find that with my longer term patients, they would, we would do booster sessions of therapy. So they would learn how to check in and they would go off and do it themselves. And then when something major happens or something they feel that they're not coping well, then they would come back. So I think it depends on yourself first. There's a first phase where you need to know yourself mm -hmm. and you need to know what you're good at, what you're bad at, what stresses you out more and learn how to cope with it. And then you need to check in and see how, how well you do and how well you don't. And if you feel, okay, this is getting really serious, then you, you either go and talk to your friend, maybe go for a spa day, take a day where you just don't do anything, you sit at home. Plus, uh, mental health days, as uh, some people say, is they just sit at home in their pajamas, they watch TV, mm -hmm. eat popcorn, and I the guess whatever thing. works for you. Whatever works for you. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a quick ad break and win back. We'll be chatting more to Hamida Basa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to Modern and Modest. With me today, we have psychologist Hamida Basa. So, Hamida, just before we took a break, we were chatting about the different types of stress where you have 
the good stress and you have mm. the bad stress and the fact that April highlights Stress Awareness Month. Now we know that this has been going on since 1992 which tells us that stress has been around then, it's around now and I'm sure as individuals we're always going to have to deal with stress. Yes. But from your experience and the patients that you deal with or just an individual out there, what are the common signs and symptoms uh, to look out for when you know that an individual is highly stressed? Okay. So I think people, depending on their biochemistry and their circumstances and their environment and growing up, they would deal with stress in different ways. So when we were talking about earlier where there's stress means that you don't have the resources to deal with the demands that you're exposed to, I think a lot of people would present with stress. They would say it's stress, but as professionals, we would diagnose it as, we would see it as mood, mood disorders or anxiety disorders. Okay. So mood disorders usually present when people feel very, very, they feel very tired and they feel very lethargic and they have no hope in, in anything that's going on. They feel very helpless and they feel like, you know, there's no point to anything anymore. And that would be when they've been so stressed out and they feel like they can't, they can't meet anything anymore. And that would be more like mood disorders and with, that's where depression will come in. Mm -hmm. Other people under stress develop anxiety. So in anxiety disorders, there's lots of different categories that we do diagnose. Anxiety is usually termed as when people have a lot of worry, stress, and tension, and a lot of racing thoughts about possible scenarios that haven't really happened yet in relation to the stress that they're experiencing. So, for example, um, you know, like moms will say, "My child is sick today, but I have to do this, and I have to do that, and I haven't yet gone to do this. And now, if I if if I don't take him to the doctor, he's going to get sick. And if he's sick, then I can't stay at home. I have to stay at home. Then I'm going to miss work. Then I have to okay. I have to get in sick leave. So it becomes like a whole situation that you're responding to. Whereas in reality, it it's hasn't case, it hasn't yeah. yet got there. Okay. Um, so so that's how people with anxiety disorders usually present. And then diagnosing them and treating them would usually happen in session, where we diagnose it for a specific mood disorder or anxiety disorder, and then treat accordingly. So would you say that anxiety stress is far easier to deal with than mood disorders? I think or the stress that brings about the mm -hmm. mood disorder. I think both have uh, both are equally weighty, and they both have an equal presence in any kind of uh, clinical practice. Mood disorders and anxiety disorders can be experienced by anyone mm -hmm. at any time in relation to anything. Um, so Islamically, you know, we say Allah doesn't give you a burden; you don't True. have the strength to bear. And I think for that, it depends on what kind of what you are able to cope with. Some people might feel, oh, I have a mood disorder, but anxiety seems really easy. I'll be able to mm -hmm. manage that. Whereas other people feel the opposite, you know, they feel like I'd rather have the anxiety disorder than the mood disorder. So I think each, each one needs to be treated with the same amount of importance as, uh, as the person that's experiencing it. Because when we treat people, we treat them as individuals mm -hmm. in relation to their context. We don't treat them in isolation or in comparison to other people. Because everyone's stress and everyone's uh, ability to cope needs to be evaluated and treated accordingly. Because no one person's experience of something is the same. Sure. Now we've just gotten over anxiety week and um, it's great that you know these things are highlighted like stress mm -hmm. awareness month or anxiety mm -hmm. week because I would think kids that are at school are generally very anxious. Mm -hmm. Why do you think our kids go through so much of anxiety? I think there's more compar in comparison to before. Mm -hmm. Currently there's firstly, alhamdulillah, there's a lot more awareness on mental health issues, but we still have a long way to go in terms of accepting that people have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stigma around saying, I'm going to see a psychologist, or I have a psychiatric appointment, or I'm on psych meds. There's a lot of stigma around mm -hmm. that. And usually people, usually we have to, our sessions are very, very confidential, and we have to keep it that way. A lot of the time, not only because the information we get is so sensitive, but because patients don't want people to know that they're coming to see us. So I think there's that, that part of it, the stigma associated with that, which we need to break and we need mm -hmm. to kind of like reach over. But more than that, I think in today's time where we have both parents working and we have high income, income demand, we have high financial responsibilities. And we, and we need to have a lot to do a lot more things in a very shorter space of time. I think that is, has a direct link to the increased kind of stress and anxiety and depression that we see nowadays. Because 
before, I think we used to live in communal households mm -hmm. and it used to help because we used to have more than one person helping to look after kids. So if kids felt they couldn't talk to mom, they had grandmother or auntie sure. or uncle to talk to. And if they were going to school, school was fun. You know, if you speak to older people now, they said, I had the best time in school. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. We, we had PE and we did this and they had a really good time at school. But kids nowadays are very stressed and very overwhelmed. They have a lot more projects to do. They, feel they have a lot, there's a lot more expectation on them. They're, they're going to very expensive schools that their parents have to work very hard to pay for. So they have to achieve in a certain way to make their parents proud. Then they have the comparison, comparing themselves to other children. And then not only other children at school, but they have to compare themselves to other children on social media, mm. which, is, which is another big stressor for them. So they're highly anxious and very de severely demotivated with less access to talk to people and, less, and there's less space for them to be open about how they feel. Because if I say I'm feeling down, mom's going to say, well, why? You have everything. Mm. Like, what's wrong with you? You know, or, or if I say I'm feeling very, very sad today, but there's something wrong with your head, you know, you can't tell people that, you want to just keep that quiet. Yeah. So I think it's the combination of the stigma, the times that we live in, and the pressure that we have put on our kids from all the different areas, if that makes sense. My next question to you, with uh, stress being such a huge part of everyone's lives, how does stress impact on on your body's well-being, can stress cause illness? Can stress, we know stress can mm. cause depression. So can this happen? And if so, how would one manage it? I think definitely. I think there's a direct correlation between the amount of stress you experience and the physical health of your body. Mm -hmm. um, so when people have, are exposed to a, a lot of stresses over an intense period for a long, prolonged period of time, what happens is they can go into adrenal fatigue, they can go into burnout, and those physical symptoms are feeling very tired, feeling very low, poorly motivated. They can develop hormone disorders, and it, it can, there's a real physical like part of stress and anxiety that you can see in your body if you don't manage your stress well. So there's definitely physical symptoms. A lot of the time, we'll have patients who come in masking their mental health issues by complaining about physical symptoms. Mm. So for example, they say I suffer with a lot of headaches, I have a tummy issues, um, I'm feeling very tired all the time. But actually when you assess further, it's either a mood disorder or an anxiety disorder. And the reason for that is because it's easier to complain about physical symptoms than it is to complain about mental health symptoms. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, people will more likely feel sorry for you if you have a headache than if you tell them, sure, my depressive episode is really bad today. You mm -hmm. know, So it's just the way that we communicate about mental health, again, that prevents us from you know, treating it and giving it the, the amount of dignity that it deserves. And physical symptoms with, related to mental health can be tested using blood tests and when we do those blood tests then we can discern how much of it is physical and how much of it is mental health. And in treating both together we can get the person healthy again. So Hamida, with so much going on with stress and um, not all of us can identify that we have a mood disorder or we're highly strung, like mm -hmm. we've just mentioned that it, you know, it would come out as a headache or a mm -hmm. tummy ache and, and so forth. But firstly, how do we identify that we are stressed? Mm -hmm. And secondly, what tips can you share with us that could sort of curb all these stress symptoms or what we could do to avoid getting to that end point? Okay, that's a very good question. So one of, the, one of the specifications for diagnosis that we have is that for all, across all kinds of uh, disease, mental health illnesses and diseases, is whether or not the person is able to still meet their requirements for living, so their basic health living, whether they're still able to function at work, at home, in social situations, and on, on their own independently. So if a person feels stressed and they're still able to go to work every day and still feel good about themselves and still meet the requirements at work without feeling like, without feeling like they're going to fall apart, then they're okay. Their stress okay. is manageable. If they're able to still go to school and still pass their grades and still have good relationships but, and pass the exams well and study, they're okay. What happens is when you feel like you can't cope anymore or you feel like you're not as good as you were before, that's when you would say that your stress has become deliberating and you need to get some sort of help or some sort of, uh, some sort of measure to know that something is wrong and to check in with yourself again. I actually like that point you raised. When you start questioning yourself that you're not good enough any longer, mm -hmm. would you say that a person that is highly stressed 
will display signs of being less confident about themselves. Definitely, most definitely. So when you, f when you feel like, okay, I used to be able to do these things mm -hmm. and now I can't because I don't have enough time, because I'm not planning well, because I'm not organized enough, then you f start questioning yourself. Is it me? Is it because I'm not working hard enough? Is it because I'm gone less intelligent? Is it because I'm not as young as I once was or as fit as I once was? Is that what it is? But in reality, it's just that your way of coping is different or you've had added things onto that that is preventing you from reaching your optimal kind of functioning. So that's why we always assess to see if they're able to still function while they're undergoing all of the stress. So as soon as we find that they're not meeting their normal functions of living or their levels, mm -hmm. or we feel like they're meeting less than, or it's becoming so debilitating that they're in bed all day, they haven't been to school or to work for weeks on end, and when they do go, they're functioning at the bare minimum, mm -hmm. then you know that something's going on. And it also bears in mind that if you know somebody who you've seen their behavior change or their patterns of activity change, then you need to start speaking to them and asking what's going on, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. I've noticed X, Y, and Z. I've noticed you stop posting so much. I've noticed you don't come for coffee anymore. I've okay. noticed you're not talking as much. You're missing more days at school. You're not on campus mm -hmm. anymore. Those kinds of questions. And tips to curb these uh, okay. symptoms? So I think one of the best things that I can give all of the viewers out there is help maintaining a healthy balance. A healthy balance from work, school, home, family time, work time, studying time. It's just you, have, you can do everything, but you have to do it within moderation. And I think the key thing there is to remember that you can't do everything at the same time. But you can do some things sometimes. You know, so you can have all these roles and all of these responsibilities that you have to do. But you can't do them all at the same time. And you can't do them all the time perfectly. Because if you mean to put that kind of pressure on yourself, you are going to burn out and you're not going to feel good about yourself. Well, I think what you need to do is maybe share with our viewers what moderation is, because I think we've all lost sight of moderation. <laughs> I, and I can see that. It does happen. It does happen a lot. Mm. But I think if you have, if you're feeling like good about what you're doing and you don't feel like you need to do more, you know, I think a lot of it is what, what we want for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, what, why am I doing this, you know? What is your motivation for pushing yourself so much in all of these areas? Are you trying to prove something to yourself or to other people? Or are you trying to make up for something? Like, what are the, again, knowing yourself and being aware of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, will be able to tell you, okay, I want to do this well because I never did this well before and I think it's important that I do it now. And then you'll be able to understand. And if I do this well today, then tomorrow I need to focus on that. And I think it's at the end of it all, if you can have, if you can grade yourself or give yourself an average kind of recollection or review everything that you've done and be like, okay, I did an okay job considering I have this to do and that to do and this to do, then I think that you would be able to say, okay, I, I've managed well and I've done as best as I could and I'm happy with that. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, that was Hamida Abbas, a psychologist who's uh, shared those tips with us. And I think the key word, Hamida, would be managing mental health and it comes with moderation. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being our show. It was indeed a pleasure having you on and I'm sure viewers would definitely take that advice going thank forward. Thank you so much. What I love about our show on Modern and Modest and our guests is that we are able to share information, tips and advice with our viewers back home. Uh, be it from thriving entrepreneurs or experts in the field and we hope that you are taking heed of all those lovely tips that they share with you well shukran for joining us until next week same time same place with myself Noshina Ghani